I knew about Kartoffeln, but not Erdäpfeln. I knew about Tomaten, but not Pettadiese, and all the specific Austrian terms that just leave people completely lost if you get them wrong. Welcome to One Day in Vienna. And today's guest is Neil Ian Parker. Name, Neil Ian Parker. Geburtsland, Kanada, Ankunft in Wien. 2019. Familienstand, verheiratet. Beruf, Pfarrer. I'm your host, Lauren Love, and welcome to this podcast where we're going to be uncovering those memorable anecdotes about this magical city that, let's face it, we all love and hate in moments. The expats featured on this show will be enlightening us as to how they navigated becoming a local in Vienna, often with a splattering of hilarious culture clashes to boot. Hello and welcome to One Day in Vienna. And today we are in the gorgeous Ippenplatz, the melting pot of all these wonderful cultures that make Vienna so very special in the spring sunshine. So I am so glad that you've brought me here today. Neil Ian Parker, thank you and welcome. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> so Neil, you are a minister in Vienna. I am. And you've moved to Vienna quite recently, actually. You're not a very experienced expat. In oh, no, no. I've been here not quite five years. I uh, hit my retirement date when I hit 60. The government paid me to stop working instead of paying me to work. And so I moved here and started a part-time job right away. And could you tell us the catalyst for you moving to Vienna? What was the reason? Oh, well, I've been planning to move to Vienna for a while because my wife lives here. And we'd been married for uh, 12 years now. And she had been commuting back and forth, coming out to Canada wherever I was posted and spending three or four months at a time with me. Then I would spend a month out here. So this um, is the first time in your marriage that you're not long distance. Yes, this is the first time we have one house instead of two. I presume you love Vienna or? Oh, I really do love Vienna. Yes. Yes. We have a lot of options. My wife is multilingual and uh, has lived in a few other spots. I'm less multilingual, but I can move around. And we've definitely decided that Vienna is where we'll be. I've decided that Vienna is where I'll be. And you know that this podcast is all about memorable or special days in Vienna. Could you please talk us through your one day oh, in Vienna? Dear. If you say special day, then I have to try and think of a sweet day when I got a birthday cake or something. No, but definitely not. No. We're all about the culture clashes. And <laughs> so when I came here and I've been preparing to come for a while, I'd studied German, but 50 years ago, in high school. So very little. And I had never studied Austrian. Which is a completely different language. Which is a completely different language. And nobody told me that. About three or four weeks after I arrived here, I thought I would start doing my acclimatizing. My wife was away for the week. So I thought, what wild and crazy thing can I do? And I decided to go to a lecture at the university. It was celebrating the anniversary of Zwingli, an early Protestant reformer. I thought, here's a chance to meet some of my peers. And it's a chance for me to dress up and practice being Austrian. <laughs> but I was very nervous. I had no idea how these things were done. I knew that in Austria, people would tell me all the time that people are much more formal. But what does that mean? Does that mean that I wear my clerical collar? Or do Protestant ministers not do that? Because then people will think they're priests. I don't know. And I didn't know anybody to ask. So I did wear my clerical collar, but I kept the tab in my pocket, <laughs> wore a nice suit. I'd registered for it. And when registering, I'd done all the right things. I'd given them my titles, Reverend Dr. Parker, and both my names, because I use Neil in English. That's what my mother called me. And I use Ian here in Vienna because it's easier and because it's what my wife's family called me. So I had both names on there. And I figured out how to get to Tabastrasse. Uh, where the lecture hall was, and I'd even scoped it out on Google Maps so I could make sure I got there. I arrived, and I had not realized that there would be a large reception room first. I thought I could sneak into the theater, but there's a reception room, and there's a table, and I'm going to have to speak to people. I walked up to the table. They asked if I was registered, and that I knew. So I said, yes, I am Dr. Parker not realizing that Parker is a common name in English and not so common in Vienna, and they hear it differently. So she asked me quite politely, Parker, mit Bertha oder Paula, with B or a P? And I thought, oh, 
I don't know either of these women. She thinks I'm with somebody, or I'm supposed to choose which group I go with. I'm completely lost. I'm looking behind me to see if Berta or Paula are waiting to introduce me or to take me into room A or room B. And she keeps asking because that's what she needs to know. You can't look me up on the list without knowing whether it's B or P. And it's such a simple question. Uh, I'm over it now. Just my eyes are shifting to a small person who is climbing on top of a stone seal. It's so sweet. <laughs> and that's one of the things I love about Vienna is uh, not just the mix of ages, but that I can't see her parents and I'm not worried. Yes. That's so I different. I have to say, as a mother of two young children, I very much appreciate the freedom that my children have and also yeah. the calm environment that they get raised oh, in. Oh, yes. Really. Like Absolutely. It's a, it's a big life yes. changer for them. Yes. Nobody is rushing around putting towels under her to make sure that she doesn't bump her little knees. Yeah. And now she does have a mushroom helmet on. <laughs> she's so, safe. <laughs> so, so she's safe. Have you chosen Ippenplatz because of this? Is this why it's one of your favorite places in the city? Um, Yes. Uh, part of it is the Brunnenmarkt, which is one of the largest outdoor markets, certainly in Austria. Der Üppenplatz in Otterkring, dem 16. Bezirk Wiens, ist ein belebter Ort am Ende des Brunnenmarkts, einem der längsten Straßenmärkte der Stadt. Rund um den Ippenplatz laden zahlreiche Cafés, Restaurants und Bars dazu ein, kulinarische Genüsse aus aller Welt zu entdecken. Das Gebiet ist auch für seine Kunst- und Kulturszene bekannt. I do the grocery shopping and the cooking, and so that for me was one of the ways to acclimatize to language, because nobody is going to switch to tourist English for you. Here in the Brunnenmarkt, many of them will speak English, but only as a fourth or fifth language, and they don't need to accommodate unless I can't order. So that's been one of the ways that I've acclimatized with things that I knew but didn't know. I knew about uh, Kartoffeln, but not Erdäpfeln. I knew about Tomaten, but not Pettadiese, and all the specific Austrian terms that just leave people completely lost if you get them wrong. And I feel like at markets, people feel more relaxed because everything's represented. I mean, at the Ippenplatz, you've got modern, old, Turkish, Iraqi, Viennese. The whole mishmash arrives at the market because you know what? Everyone wants good food. <laughs> yes. Yes. As we're looking here, there's a whole line of restaurants. I haven't been to them all yet. But they're all different. Yeah. And they're all good. Yes. Um, the plaza is full of people sitting outside and people meeting each other. And it's just a great place to come in. And do you have any other favorite places in the city? Somewhere that's like your happy place? Yeah, that's a good question. Because one of the things I really try to do is get to many places. I'm still exploring. Yeah. For the first year or so, my track was pretty much our closest. U-Bahn station, Ottokring, down to Stefansplatz in the inner city. and Which is where you work as a minister. And that's where I minister. work. Yeah. And then that was it. Occasionally I'd wander off the beaten path, but I could always see an U-Bahn station so I could get home. And now I'm really literally saying, okay, where does the Schnellbahn go? And how far can I go with my universal pass? <laughs> and really say, okay, so this is different. Oh, good. They serve coffee and beer here, so I'm okay. One of the things I was pleased to be able to do is when I moved here, I started to get my driver's license, and then I stopped. We're down to one, and that's a business car, so I don't drive, and I love that. So you're a local now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think that, yeah. yes. I still do some work online in Canada and uh, still have connections there. But that's why you still say about I love that. I can't hear that. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It divides the Canadians yeah. from the Americans for me. I oh, know no, 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 no. Uh, what divides Americans and Canadians is that we use the word sorry as punctuation. <laughs> yes, the English uh, too. Yes. <laughs> Comes yeah. from the colonial A, a Canadian times, is somebody who, when you step on their foot, they apologize to you. <laughs> I can't hear it. If I say about, it doesn't sound like that to me. I know that you are a fantastic student at Innes Language School. And I <laughs> you get fantastic. They are so sweet and so nice there. And I think they just like having an old person. I've heard you're a very, very hardworking student. And I do have to say, it's quite impressive to move to a country later in life and learn a brand new language for love. So I'm a big fan of this. So how is your German? <laughs> I am very clear that I say I speak very little German and I speak like a four-year-old child. <laughs> And I said that to my doctor, who is very sweet, has been my wife's doctor for years. 
And I said, you know, we'll have to do much of this in English. I don't know the technical terms. I speak like a four-year-old child. And she said, no, 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 more like a (laughs) seven-year-old, which I thought was fine and and rude. But then... And honest. (laughs) And honest. (laughs) But then her front desk office staff came in and she said, you know, Mr. Parker says he speaks like a four-year-old. And the office worker said, no, no, more like a (laughs) seven-year-old. And unless she was on an intercom, I thought, okay, so I'm pegging myself at a seven-year-old, um, although I can't understand seven-year-olds. <laughs> I had uh, a marvelous conversation with a, a young woman, about eight or nine, who was selling books to raise money for the Ukraine. And it was a good school project, and she was right in my neighborhood, and I don't get much opportunity to mix with neighbors. So I thought, okay, I'm going to speak with her. I went up and said, do you have books for somebody who speaks like a four-year-old? And she sort of knew what I meant because she had a younger sister, and she sold me a whole bunch of picture books. (laughs) There's no words in them. There's one of them that Bear schreibt ein Brief. (laughs) Bear writes a letter to his woodland friends. (sighs) And that was it. So I've got a stack of picture books that I bought uh, that don't help me We can me do an all. exchange. I've got lots of four-year-old appropriate <laughs> books in my house in German. Perfect. We can do an exchange. <laughs> Perfect. But what was delightful was that she, and I could tell that she switched to speaking a more standard German yeah. to speak to me langsam und klar. I find this really respectful, I have to say. So yeah. I think it's really nice to encourage people into the language. And when every single mistake is kind of highlighted, you don't really feel very comfortable yeah. communicating. And at the end of the day, we all communicate differently. It's about I, communication. Yes, and you know? she communicated very, very well. I also appreciated the fact that her father was hovering. And when he saw that she was doing a good job, he stepped away and let her interact with me as a neighbor which was nice. Most of my neighbors speak a strong dialect and I smile and nod (laughs) a lot, although I'm understanding more now. And that's And has that opened you up to the city a bit through speaking a bit more German? Um, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, For me, it's been pretty important to get away from English speaking areas. That's why I don't go downtown as much, where if I'm trying to buy something, they'll switch to English. Yeah, it's automatic almost. Automatically. And it's polite, even if I insist on speaking German. So I get out and about more. Uh, My neighborhood out in the 16th district, uh, people will not switch to English. Many of them don't speak English. Yeah, They will soften their accent a little bit for me and they'll speak a little bit slower, but not much. (laughs) (laughs) So you introed the mention of Innes. And so I'll go back there because I am taking private instruction. And I'll say one of the German teachers, but it's pretty clear that she is the best (laughs) of them all. I have to find out her name. Yes. Whose initials will be Sandra. (laughs) Sandra Dahl. It's not Belinda or Paula? (laughs) And Berta? Paula? Berta, sorry. I don't know any of these women. And one of the things that's wonderful is that we spend time in conversation. So yes, she puts the grammar in front of me, but then we'll start talking about something. Last time I was there, we started talking about chess. I don't know any chess terms. I'll just ask, what are these things called? And it turns out that she is a chess player. So she's immediately ringing off all of the things and explaining terms like castling, which is when you move the pawn and the king in reverse. So those are not things I would have ever asked. I think it's lovely to be able to explore the things that actually interest you in your language. Neil, do you have any favorite Austrian German words? (laughs) I do have several that trip me up. One was always going into Billa and seeing the signs that said Küstlich. I thought, well, that's that's got some chutzpah to advertise that you're costly. <laughs> I had no idea that that meant something else. I'd learned lecker. So I keep running into ones like that. I should be able to impress everybody by saying squirrel <gasps> in dialect. Can you do it with the tail? Euch katzelschwaf? Euch katzelschwaf. Bedeutet auf Hochdeutsch Eichkätzchenschwanz also der Schwanz eines Eichhörnchens. In Wien und anderen Teilen Österreichs wird dieses Wort oft benutzt, um die Besonderheit der österreichischen Dialekte zu zeigen. Es wird auch in spielerischen Situationen verwendet, zum Beispiel, wenn man die Aussprache von jemandem, der nicht aus Österreich kommt, auf die Probe stellen möchte. Yeah, ja, super. Oh, that's good for me, I'm the Engländer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because squirrel is just one of those words that traps so many people. It's hard for non-English speakers to say in English. Squirrel has got all those bad sounds. 
I think squirrel is one of the most dangerous words in any language. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Because yes. I would call it a squirrel, being English. Americans oh, so and cute. Canadians would call it squirrel. Yeah, a bit more. Yep. And then we have Eichkatzel or Eichhörnchen. Yeah, Eichhörnchen. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, as a newbie, Neil, in the city, I think you're probably going to give us the best advice from any of the expats that we've heard. What advice would you give anyone who's just about to move or is, has just moved to Vienna? I think my advice is, I'm going to say blend in or go incognito. It doesn't mean getting out of the places where you can naturally fit in. If I were a young student, I'd stay away from the university off hours. I would go other places. I'd go to football fields, etc. I would go and enjoy things that I wouldn't normally do. So I would talk about chess with somebody and I would talk about football with somebody young to find out if there's a difference between pass the ball and pass the salt. Again, something I wouldn't think of asking. I think that's part of it is to go to places where you won't immediately be that newcomer, that tourist. Neil, if you're on here that for note, culture, you do that. But otherwise, you go to different plots. On that note, thank you for doing something completely outside of your comfort zone and joining us today for One Day in Vienna at the gorgeous Ippenplatz. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Auf Wiederhören. Yes, sir. You love Vienna too and want to learn German? Innes Vienna will get you there. Vienna's best language school offers a variety of courses and trainings at different levels, at different times and at different intensities. All information about Innes Vienna and today's guests can be found in the show notes. And there we also explain all other German words, terms and Viennese areas from this episode. Thanks for listening. Auf Wiederhören.